is an overview of the 2012 wiring harness. Uh, first here you'll see the EC cover. You have the relays. Uh, you'll have the fuse block for the four fuses and the OBD2 port. Uh, underneath here is the gray ECU plug. Uh, next is your oil level sensor if you have the high capacity pan. This is the pig, where the pigtail will plug in to go to the front of the van. Following down along the harness here, we have the brown mill wire. This is also going to the front of the van for the LED. Uh, this is the grommet. It's going to be found in the far wall underneath the bench seat. Uh, going down the harness here, you have the uh, fuel pump wires. Continuing on down the harness, we have the first branch here. This goes to the black box. Um, inside the black box, if you have an 85 or older, you'll have this white connection to connect to inside the black box. Uh, you'll have the uh, post for power in the black box. And then you have these the yellow and blue wires. Uh, the yellow wire is switch power, and the blue wire is your um, field wire. If you're an 84 down, you'll have this little sub harness. Um, the main white plug here will connect back over to here, and it's basically adapting to the 84 down. Uh, you have three connections. The first one is uh, coolant level um, and coolant temperature wires. That'll plug into a matching connection in the black box. Uh, you have your oil pressure switch. That's a blue wire with a white connector that'll match up. And your green wire is your uh, tack. Continuing back down the harness, there's two branches. Uh, following the first branch, we'll come across the uh, plastic clips that go into the back uh, firewall along the engine bay. And the first branch here off of that is the speed sensor. That'll go down to your speed sensor. This uh, green wire with a white cap is for the noise suppression that's found on the coil bracket. And just after that is the plug for the coil. After that is the two wires going to the temp uh, cooling tower. There's one there. The first one, the yellow and red, is for the temperature, and the blue and green is for the level sender. Following along to the next branch, we have the uh, oxygen sensor. It's that gray plug there. The gray wires, if you have the high capacity pan, this is going into the back of the sensor. next branch here is going to the crank position sensor. Following along again, we have the uh, mass airflow sensor connector. Going back to the branch here, following along the first connection is an eyelet for ground for the body of the van. Continuing along, we have the fuel pump, or sorry, the, the uh, fuel uh, rail harness connection and the alternator and alternator post connections. This is an overview of the new ECU bracket as well as harness and how you're going to route it. Here I've got uh, it already installed just so we can see what it's going to look like when it's done. Uh, the ECU is in there, plugged in, uh, the cover's in there. And we use these tabs to have the ECU sit on one set and get locked into the top. And then there I'm pointing at the um, ECU cover where all the fuses and, and um, relays are, and that gets uh, bent into the bracket as well. So like I said, we're going to be reviewing uh, the ECU bracket first. So first let's get the ECU cover installed into the bracket itself via the four small tabs that will be inserted into the uh, four slots on the bracket. The only other thing you want to make sure of is while you're uh, installing the ECU cover that the relays, as you can see there, are facing the back slot of the bracket so that they match in the top. Uh, this way you have your OBD2 port, your fuses, and your relay all accessible inside the bracket. So the relays again are going to be pointed towards the back. Uh, try not to catch your fingers in it while you're doing it. So now you have the ECU cover in there, and there's four small tabs 
that are protruding from the bracket. I'm now going to take uh, my pliers and bend them down and then press them down. So that basically that those four tabs are just holding the ECU cover into the bracket. Flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. See the two tabs sticking through here a little bit better. And I'm just taking the pliers and bending them down uh, so that they grip. It's kind of like a, a car stereo where you're installing the, the deck into the car and they, they give you a little sheet metal part that has all these tabs that bend down. Same idea. Okay. Next, you can see on the bottom here, there are uh, two of the bottom most slots, those little rectangle cutouts. And I'm going to use a screwdriver to um, bend them in and then use pliers to bend them in. And this is what the ECU is going to be sitting on. Um, there's those tabs again. And right here, so this, this set and then the, the other set on the bottom are the four that tabs are going to get them bent in. They're just going to bend in at a 90 degree angle and the ECU is going to sit on top of them. I'm just using the screwdriver here to get them started a little bit so that they're protruding in a little bit and then I'm going to grab them with the pliers and bend them the rest of the way. So now that these four tabs are bent flat, they form a surface for the ECU to sit on. So now we're going to go ahead and insert your ECU. You're going to leave the cover um, on the ECU, and it's going to be plugging into the large gray plug on the harness that I'm grabbing right here. You'll see it better in a second. And you want to make sure that the gray plug is facing towards the connector on the ECU harness, and that the cover, you can see the forward symbol, so that's the cover side up, and we're going to insert it so that it sits on top of those four tabs we just bent down. At this point you're going to insert the, the gray plug into the ECU and hand tighten the screw uh, down so that's uh, snug because there's a there's a bolt in the in the ECU plug that pulls the the plug into place as you screw it down. Here I'm just going to use a socket to uh, tighten that bolt down. That's just to hold the ECU in place while I do the rest of the procedures. Now that that's snug, we're going to, um, there's four tabs on the outside here. And those are actually going to grab the front and back of the ECU. In this case, I've bent the front two, uh, but not the rear. Uh, it doesn't make a big difference the order you do it into. But next, I'm going to um, bend down the top four tabs. These are going to hold the top of the ECU. Again, just like the bottom ones, we're going to get them started with uh, a screwdriver, and then we're going to finish them off with pliers.
because these are a little bit tighter against the ECU cover, it's easier to actually uh, push them into place rather than bend them into place, as you'll see me do here with the pliers. And here I'm just snugging down the um, clip to grab the top of the ECU on all four spots. And now I'm going to go back and, and bend in those back two tabs to hold the ECU in place. And that's the ECU mounted in the bracket. So this is the back end of a Vanagon. The whole body up there has been removed and the whole body in front of that's all been removed but you can see that's the back end. This would be the passenger side, that would be the driver's side. And for a seven passenger van, it'll essentially look like this and your ECU would have been hanging off these two tabs here and there would have been a plastic nut holding the ECU here and you would have had a ground wire going to this and the van's main wiring harness coming through here going to this whole black metal cover here which is where ECU was. You'll remove all that and this is where our 2010 wiring harness will go. And to mount all this you're going to start from inside the van, this is under the bench seat, and you're going to feed all the plugs to the wiring harness through that hole until you get to the grommet here. And then our ECU and the bracket is going to get mounted in this space here and you can see we've already drilled couple of holes, but uh, you'll go and, and essentially do the same thing and then mount this whole setup. So, so Nate's got all the wires in his hand there. He'd be inside the van. And uh, it's as simple as feeding each one of the plugs through the holes. Uh, that first wire he has there is the one that goes to the mass air meter. So it's on the very end, the longest part of the harness. It's going to go through this hole, get routed on top of this frame rail, behind the spring perch, and then to the firewall here, and then you're going to pull them up through underneath the firewall in this space here. And then they'll go along the frame rail there to the back corner, and they'll go up to this area here, uh, just next to the license plate hole on the driver's side. And that's where the plug for the fuel rail will go. And then the rest of the wires will come out from underneath the firewall here and go up. And then get mounted, you can see there, to that one square hole. That's where one of those plastic clips goes that I talked about. The second one will go there. You can see the plastic plug is still there, so you have to remove that. Same thing there. So the third plastic clip will go. And the rest of the harness will get it up here along the firewall and then go to where the air box will be here behind the passenger side taillight. So Nate's already snaked some of the wires through and he's basically feeding them through the hole one by one. You can see I've got them out here in the wheel well. There's like a coil wire, one of those plastic clips, speed sensor wire, that's O2 and what have you, that's the mass air meter. And he's pushing them through the hole. At some point, one. at some point, you need to need to get under the van and make sure you're routing these to the right side. Um, yeah, done. for us, it's a little easier, obviously, because it's not a complete van. But basically, it's a matter of routing them through those holes or through that hole, making sure they end up behind the spring perch. Oops. 
So now Nate's got all the wires through the hole, and then the last part to go through is the actual grommet, which will seal off the hole in the body. And it's got a groove in it, and that groove uh, just gets put through till the sheet metal lines up with it. So there you go. I'll set that. You'll see it's a, it's a decent seal. It's air, relatively air and watertight. And then you've got the rest of the harness here, which then goes to the bracket, and then the bracket gets mounted to the body. While there's no set position, you actually have to have the bracket. Uh, you want to try to align it so you can get at least two holes on the top and two holes on the bottom. Uh, we've provided you with three quarter inch sheet metal screws that'll go through anywhere you have direct contact with the sheet metal. If you have a space here and you find you need the spacer, there's uh, one uh, spacer and a longer uh, one inch sheet metal screw yeah, provided. So it's a little standoff with a yeah. longer sheet metal screw. So we find uh, we can get, if you place it around this area, you can get all six. Like we said, two on the top, two on the bottom, or even two on the top and one on the bottom should be fine. So once you have the bracket approximately where you want it, uh, you're going to mark and drill these holes uh, with an eighth inch drill bit. And you're going to get approximately two on the top and two on the bottom and screw it into place. Yeah, basically just, you'll just hold the bracket there, mark the, the holes with a sharpie. And then, you know, the holes will transfer to the body, and then you'll drill them with an eighth-inch bit. Three screws in this thing is plenty to hold it. If you want to go crazy and make it crash-proof, six will do. But uh, if you've just got the two on the top, like Nate said, and then the one on the bottom, it's totally fine. And then um, this one will need the aluminum standoff with the longer sheet metal screw. All right, and then Nate's just going to go and, and put the last screw in on the bottom. And uh, we're just going to use three on this one, so he's, he's put into the center hole there. And that's it. So you can see the grommet is pushed through the body, seated all the way. And this is the main harness here of the Z-Tech setup. Um, if you've got a synchro, you do have enough room to get to this. The gas tank will be in this area. This is a two-wheel drive van, so this space here is totally open. But either way, you'll route this harness down along this frame rail behind the spring perch there, and then it's going to go underneath the firewall. So you can see right now all the wires are there on the floor because there's no transmission, and I'm in the engine bay. But basically, you'd route the fuel pump wires, which, is, which are in this gray wire here, uh, if you're two-wheel drive, they'll get routed to the fuel pump there on the uh, just off the uh, underneath the slider door, and if you're a synchro, they'll get routed to the fuel pump, which is roughly in this space here. But then the rest of the main harness, you simply just lay out in the engine bay here, and uh, you know you just follow it uh, so that the mate. If I get your help here, the main harness uh, has this multi-wire plug on it. And that gets routed to the fuel pump, or sorry, the fuel rail harness, which is which will be in this space with its plug near your alternator. And then you've got this other main section of the harness with these plastic clips on it, which get routed into these square holes here. Like I said, they still have the plastic clips in this one, and in that one there. So that'll effectively pull that like that, Nate. That'll effectively be like this along the back wall here and then the screen wire is what will go to your coil this is what goes down to your speed sensor this is the main wire that goes to your coil here and then the rest of the harness just runs around the corner of the engine bay this wires will, will go behind the passenger side tail light to your mass air meter these guys which were back a bit go to your O2 sensor and your crank position sensor and uh, that's roughly it. The rest of the harness would come up around the box that way and sit something roughly like that. This goes to the post inside the black box there. The post is that there. And uh, this is the gray plug, which gets, or the black and gray plug, which gets connected to the sub harness. And that'll be sitting roughly in this area. And that's about it.
So if you have a Westie set up, you've effectively got a piece of wood here. This is a piece of cardboard. Um, but you've effectively got a piece of wood here which has the bracketry to the seat mounted on it. And uh, there'd be some bolts down here holding the wood to the body of the van. And then in this space here, you'd have like the actual kick panel underneath the bench seat. But what I want to show you here is that on a Westie, this hole is partly obscured by this piece of wood. I think it's actually obscured uh, so that this is actually behind this piece of wood. There's a couple of ways you can get to it. You can either take a file and just notch this out so that you have more access to it, or you can loosen the screws that go through the floor for this uh, wall here. And I think there's one here in the back, there's one in this space here, and then you'd have to undo the two that go between this side wall and then the actual kick panel. If you loosen all of those, you should be able to get enough play in this wall that you can move it out of the way and get these wires through. Because remember, on the back side of this piece of wood is the water tank on a Westie. But in either case, you can get the harness and all of its plugs through that hole and then get them uh, to the outside of the van and then into the engine bay. And then as far as mounting the ECU, since this piece of wood is here uh, on your Westie, that is where your ECU is mounted. There's two screws uh, in the top and then there's one on the bottom of that black metal cover. Well, ours is somewhat similar in that this will get mounted to the wall. Uh, you only need to use three screws. If you want to use six or you know any, any number in there between, you're fine. But you want to get like two screws in two of those mounting holes up top. And then you can just get one of the screws into the mounting holes in the bottom. And that's plenty to hold the ECU to this wall here. And then you still have access to your OBD2 port and to the fuses. Two wires uh, that are in the kit. They're just heavy gauge red wires. They have black loom on them, but they're actually red wires underneath the loom. And one wire is a slightly heavier gauge than the other. And these two wires, separate them here so you can see them. These two wires are what go between the starter and the alternator and the starter and the post of the black box inside the engine bay. So the larger gauge of the two wires has two eyelets, one on either end. One is larger than the other. This large eyelet here gets connected to the post on the starter. The eyelet here with the smaller hole gets connected to the post on the alternator. And this is the heavier gauge wire of the two. The other one also has two different size eyelets, has a larger one, and the larger one gets connected to the post on the starter, and the smaller eyelet gets connected to the post inside the black box in the engine bay. And again, this is the smaller gauge of those two wires. This is the back of, of uh, my synchro van, which is often a guinea pig, so you may see a few things in here which don't quite look the same as yours, but don't worry about that. Just focus on the things we're talking about here. And that is the wiring harness. So you can see I've got the wiring harness back behind the pass, uh, sorry, driver's side tail light. And then it has its main wiring harness, which is coming out of it. And it goes here to this gray plug, which is routed to the fuel injector harness on the engine and then to all the other sensors on the motor. And then I've got my wire here, which is plugged into the alternator, and then the wire is looped down to the post on the alternator. The main harness continues along, and this here, if you can see it, this wire here is the gray plug where the sub-harness interfaces with the main harness. And then the whole harness runs along the engine bay, and then I have it going up over the black box, and the next wire to exit is the green wire I just talked about in the video, which goes to the little capacitor guy here next to the coil. And then there's the long wire here, which goes down to the speed sensor. And since this is a manual transmission, it goes to the driver's side of the transmission. If you're an auto, it would go to the passenger side of the transmission down to your speed sensor. Then the next wire to exit is, my coil is loose here so I can show you, this is the actual plug going to the coil. And 
then that runs to the harness right here. Then you're moving along. Don't pay any attention to this wire here. <laughs> uh, this is some old stuff on mine. Uh, the next wire for you guys to exit is that one that splits into two. And you can see that it goes down to this gray plug here, which is for the O2 sensor. And this is the plug. The O2 sensor has some heat shielding on it there. And then back in the corner here, might be a little difficult to see, but this is the wire for the crank position sensor. And you can see both wires are routed. Let's see if I can get you in here. Both wires are routed underneath the wing to the adapter plate. And they're also routed behind the intake hose and whatever else here. And that's just to keep them away from the exhaust manifold here. So that's the wire there that we were just talking about. Then the harness continues along. I have it then going along the top of the engine bay here, going to my mass air meter to the air box, which is behind the passenger side tail light. And then uh, the other wires we talked about were the wires that go from the starter to the alternator. And on all the vans, the starters are on the passenger side of the transmission. And so the heavier gauge wire goes from the starter around the back side of the engine, along the intake manifold here, and gets routed to the post on the alternator there. And then the other wire goes from the post on the starter and gets routed into the black box here in the corner of the engine bay. Let's see if I can do this with one hand for you guys. One, there's two. Okay. So now, don't pay attention to any of the other relays and jazz in here. It's a crowded mess. But you can see there's the post that I, we refer to in this black box here. And this post has that red wire coming from your starter. Now, in here are two sets of these round white plugs. This, let's see, this one here is the, let me back up here so you can actually see. This is the one that you actually separate. And then this is the one here. Look if you can see it. Let's see if I get you around here. This is the one that stays in the van, and this is the one that goes to the tail lights, license plate lights, all that kind of stuff in the engine bay. You want to leave this one. It's this one that you're going to disconnect. And you know, it's got like a red with a black stripe, blue with a black stripe, yellow with red, it's got a green wire, a blue with green. And those wires, a lot of those colors, will match up with what's there on the other side. Let's see if you can see it there. Let me pull you back. It's got a red with yellow, blue with green, blue with white. So that's how, kind of how you can tell which one of these two round white plugs to disconnect. But again, if you're 85 and newer, you'll just plug that round white plug into this guy. You're good to go. All the other wires like the mill wire would go from this gray plug to the front of the van and uh, you'll make all your connections with the mill light up front and I believe that's about it if you have an OBD2 extension which we can show you in another video it would get routed from the ECU box here this is an older version but it would get routed from the box here and also just go up front underneath the van under the driver side frame rail to the front and the driver's side frame rail are where all the wires going from the front of the van to the rear of the van are located so just follow them along that routing path and uh, just make sure that when you route wires up front there to uh, be careful of the steering linkage because that stuff does move and you don't want wires getting caught around it and then breaking and that's about it there's a shot of the wire hooked up to the speed sensor and this is on a manual transmission so it's on the driver's side and you can see the plug there with the shiny nut and bolt just above it mounted just above the CD boot and then I'll zoom out here so you can kind of get a better idea of where you're at.